coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man. Much love, much love, man. Everybody on Team Banky Pam, everybody on the membership, you know, give yourself a round of applause, man, because we just hit 40K, man. 40K. That's a beautiful thing. It's onward and upward from here, so I owe that all to y'all, man. I appreciate the love, and we just going to grow from here. We're going to try to get as big as we can get. Spread this positive energy and spread this message all over, man. So, love to all of y'all, man. I'm sending that love and that energy out to y'all. I hope y'all receive it as well as I receive it from y'all. So, I appreciate you. Uh, man, 40K, who would have thought that? You know, who would have thought it, man? But it's here. It's a beautiful thing. Um, when I uh, started this YouTube thing, man, I didn't even know where it was going to go, man. I had no idea. I had no clue. But to to turn around and be right now at 40K, man, I just think it's a beautiful thing. So thank y'all a whole lot, man. I just want y'all to know how much that means to me that y'all pay attention to what I, I have to say, that y'all get something out of it. And it is a blessing in every lesson, man. So thank you. Um... I was going to start telling y'all different little stories too, man. You know, just different uh, situations that don't necessarily cause for, or, you know, a whole series or, or one or two videos or two or three videos or something like that. So just different things that I be thinking of and when people be talking to me in my life and ask me about situations, certain situations come up and it just brings back so many memories, man, because you got to understand that I have 33 years of memories from being incarcerated. Only been in society for 21. So I don't have a 21 years of memories from society. You know, and a year of that has been since I've been out with y'all. So you gotta think, you know, 20. So before you, you look at 15 to 20, so you're talking about five years of, you know, more mature, uh, memories and things and activities and stuff. So it's a vast difference in that. With that being said, man, um, I was thinking about this one night at segregation, man. You know, I've been in segregation a lot during my uh, during my 33 years, man. More more than I like to remember, but oh man, it's just so many different times. But I remember this particular time. Uh, I was back there, man, and I had been back there a minute. I mean, a minute. I had been back there probably at the time of this incident I'm talking about. I might have been back there for about six months, seven months. And um, you know, when you in when you in segregation, man, you go through a whole lot of different emotions, a whole lot of different feelings, a whole lot of different stages. You know, I did anyway, especially when I was back there for long periods of time. I might go through a stage where I'm just working out, you know, like an animal, man. You know, just getting in tip-top physical shape. You know, I wake up in the morning, my routine will be, I wake up in the morning, you know, I, I work out as soon as I get up. I work out, you know, eat breakfast, the garbage that they bring us, <laughs> you know, and um, lay back down, man, wash up, lay back down, wake up again, work out again, you know, wash off, t turn around and, and, and eat lunch, and then I'll sit down and read. I read, you know, books, novels, read some chapters and chapters and chapters till I get tired. I lay down again, take a nap, man, wake up and work out a third time and wash off then and relax for the rest of the night and read till I fall asleep. Wake up and repeat. I used to do that, you know, the whole time I was in segregation sometime, but depending upon how long you stay back there, you know, the mundane routine sometime will get, it'll get boring, so you have to do different things. So you go through your working out stage, then you go through you're just reading stage where you just want to read. Then you go through your, what I used to call your 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 uh, your reminiscing stage, man. Where you just looking through all your old pictures, remembering times you had when you was on the street, remembering things you done when you was on the street. You know, you get all melancholy and stuff. Get the feeling all you know, uh, 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 nostalgic, and 
you go through that stage, sometimes that can cause depression. You know, you, you get to feeling depressed. So, you know, but when you back there and you just in a room, you're talking about an eight by 10 room with nothing in there but a steel cold bunk, a steel table and a steel commode in the door. And that's it, you know, and the voices just coming from the other rooms and stuff, man. People, man, I can remember back in the day, even during this time right here about this, this incident, I'm gonna tell y'all about, this is how creative and, and bored and bored, creative and bored people be when they're in segregation. I can remember I was beside this dude named Daryl. And we used to be chopping it up all the time because, like I say, you really got nobody to talk to back there. You, you, you're all alone with your thoughts, which can be very, very dangerous. So, man, we used to be getting on the floor. Sometimes we bring our matches. We know we're going to talk for a long time or whatever. We be on the floor, man, literally laid down talking through the bottom of the door which the crack was probably about this big and he's next door which is probably about two three feet and i'm talking hollering over to him he hollered back to me but you got other people be talking too so sometimes man people used to get so creative they used to take newspaper lots and lots of newspaper and roll it up into a long tube and we could take that tube and slide it under the door all the way over to his door. So we slide it all the way to his door. Then he has the tube in there. I have the tube in there. Sometimes we connect the styrofoam cup to the end of it. And you talk and listen. Talk and listen. That, that was our telephone, man. That, that was our cell phone before, before we had cell phones, you know. Yeah, we used to do that, man. Because I can remember doing that with him, which was crazy. And now that I'm talking about it, and I just just remember that as I'm telling y'all the story. But things like that, man, we used to do just to uh, just to get by, man, just to to kill to kill the boredom, to you know uh, have some type of uh, human contact because that's what isolation is meant for to be for you just to be by yourself, you know. So we used to do things like that, man. And, when you back then, like long-term seg, like most of us was, like this part was, we was in long-term seg. Most of everybody back there was going to be back there for a minute, months, if not years. So when you in long-term seg like that, man, you know, you boy, you trying to get everything done. You trying to, you know, do the things that you was able to do out of the population. Dudes used to try to get stuff smuggled back there, cigarettes so they could smoke, you know, everything. You know, drugs, if they did drugs, anything, they try to get it back there to, to you know, to use to try to, you know, fight this boredom that you was going through. So, man, dudes used to make, you know, wine liquor back there as well. It took a longer, longer time because they had to accumulate the stuff to make it with. So it took a longer time. So when they did make it, you know, and, and, and was able to get away with it, because making making liquor in the prison and making wine, or what we call it wine, but it's, you know, alcohol. When you make that in prison, it's a process to it, you know, and that process calls for certain things that you can get to make it but it also you have to be able to subside the smell because it, it puts out an odor as it's cooking and that odor you have to counter counter or uh, act that odor by putting out other smells to throw off the COs when they're walking by to throw off the COs when they're in the block because the smell can get real real loud real loud man so it's harder to even Camouflage that smell when you when you in segregation. But like I say, man, where there's a way, there's a will. Dudes will find out how to do it. So every now and then, somebody might come up with some wine back there, and you know they might sell it, which might be some astronomical prices because we in the hole, we in seg, everybody doing bad, you know. But I can remember, man, when we was back there on this this uh, particular incident, man. We was back there. I was back there with a couple of people that I knew too, man. My uh, my best friend was back there at the same time too, man. Dixon, man. Shout out, I'm gonna tell y'all a story about Dixon uh, one day in the near future too. Top soldier, man, you know. It's like my brother, you know, for the majority of my uh, sentence, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, we was back there, man, and the dude was like, it was his birthday. And he said he had paid some dudes to make some wine, so, he said, man, come tonight, man, when the good shift come on, man, we going to drink, everybody going to drink, man, we going to toast for my birthday, man, you know, and what he meant by good shift was that the officer that was supposed to be coming on was cool, 
you know, you when you were saved, man, you 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 in a a block, a whole uh part with like 80, 80 some people in there, 40, 40, well, yeah, 40 some, 40 says, 40 says, 80, about 80 people in there. So you're talking about everybody's in a single cell by themselves, you isolation, you have no clothes, you have nothing, you only have, you know, your underwear, t shirts, and you're in the cell by yourself with nothing else in there. They come around, bring you three trays a day, you know, your, your slot is closed, you got a little slot, maybe about as wide as this, about that high, they open that up, put your trays in there three times a day pick your trays up, take them out. So you can't really get outside of your door unless they come get you out. They're going to handcuff you and shackle you. They bring you out. But when they bring you food, they open the tray slot. Man, dudes were so ingenious back there. I'm trying to tell you, man, dudes in prisons are lit literally geniuses back there. Dudes figured out a way what they call popping the slot. Right? That means they found out a way to open the tray slot without the key. Without the key, man, it, it takes a string. They can use a string. They can use plastic spoons. Uh, you name it, man. It just was. It just. It was amazing to me when I was learning all of this stuff. So sometimes dudes that learn how to pop the slot, man. They have. They've showed other dudes how to pop the slot. So sometimes it depends on what ship it is because you always got somebody in the booth too. They can look up and clearly see that the slot is popped. They can call the police. Police come. But by this time. Everybody know that people pop the slot. You know, you can get a charge for it, but dudes are lying and say, I ain't pop it, it fell open. You know, you ain't see me open it. Stuff like that, but they got used to it, but when they come around and the slots is open, they just close them, you know, and they might tell you, well, look, don't let the slot come back open tonight because I just closed it, I know it wasn't open. Stuff like that, so it was different uh, different officers, different ways, different rules. That that was, That's another thing to throw you off in prison. Because everybody got there. supposed to be one rule, but you dealing with a different officer, he may go by a different set of rules. So if you used to dealing with this type of officer going by these type of rules, when another officer come, you can get tricked up because he ain't going for the same thing, right? Because everybody's not enforcing the same rule. So just some more dynamics about prison. But um, anyway, so dudes used to pop this slot, man, then they sat down there and what we call a chuck hole, the slot. You chuckle, we sat in the chuckle and just holler and, and just talk like that. It was easier to talk. But then the thing was back there, you know, when some people get to talking and everybody want to get in the conversation, then it's a big conversation. And then people over talking to other people, 10 conversations going on at one time, just pure chaos, man. But you learn to deal with the chaos. It, it, it becomes normal to you. That's the new norm to you. The new normal was learning how to deal and compartmentalize all the things that go with segregation, all the things that go with prison. So it, it just became normal, you know, like even with me after a while, it just became normal. Like I used to couldn't sleep with a lot of noise, but now after I had been in prison for a certain amount of time, the noise didn't bother me. You know, I could go to sleep with the noise. It's just like they could be as loud as they want to be because I, I had le learned how to mentally tune it out in my brain as if it wasn't noise. But at the same time, that could be tuned out in my brain. It could be loud, you know, super loud. But if my door opened, which was lower than the noise that was in the block, I, my mind was trained and I would automatically wake up. Whereas I could sleep through the loud chaos, I would wake up if that door moved because that was a protection mechanism that was already built in my brain. That somebody could sneak in there when you sleep and do whatever they want to do to you. So my brain had already processed that information that different type of noise, and I was able to wake up if that door opened, but I was also able to sleep through, you know, enormous amount of noise, like it wasn't no problem. So yeah, it's just different things and different uh, habits and, and, uh, and, and, and uh, techniques that you learn while you're in prison, especially if you've been in there for a while. But like I say, dudes used to pop the chuck hole and just, you know, sit there and talk and conversate. So it was understood now that, you know, the dude, it was his birthday, he was going to have some wine, everybody he was cool with was going to be able to get a drink. The CO that was coming on, we call it good ship, I mean, he was cool, he wasn't really causing no problems. He would actually even move stuff for you, like say, take this over there for me right fast, man. And he would grab it and take it over there, which was a no-no, but he would do it. If certain officers would do it, other officers would look at you like, well, what you got? Well, what you got something here you don't supposed to have? And then you you all the way in the trick bag. You already in the trick bag, so it's crazy. But we used to also fish, what we call fishing was dudes would 
take something heavy, maybe like a a, a, a bottle of lotion or, or a bottle of, a, a small thing of hair grease, and they would tie knots around it with a string. Take your sheet and rip your sheet all up and make a long line, connect the sheets and make a long line, tie it on the end of something heavy, and you sling it out your door and let it slide all the way down in front of whatever door you're trying to get in front of. And then he goes and slips his line out and fish for it, trying to make them lines intertwine. And he pulls that line in his cell and then you attach what you want to attach on it and he pulls it all the way down to his cell. I'm telling you, man, these dudes is ingenious in prison, man. And just imagine when you first going in and you learning all these things. I'm learning all these things. I was just like super fascinated, you know, super fascinated with all these different things. But it's just a function that, that, that they had created, that they, that, that they could just function without missing a beat. Whatever was taken away from them, they found a way to substitute that in other ways and to make, you know what I'm saying, make get done what they wanted to get done, which I say to this day, even looking back on it, it just was some amazing stuff. Some of the simplest things was just so amazing because other people, especially people from this world right here, the free world, would be in those situations and couldn't even figure this out or couldn't even uh, uh, begin to understand how can I get this from over here to over there when no one's opening the door and the doors is locked and there's no way. They would exhaust their remedies by saying, oh, the door is locked, I just can't get to you. But it, there is a way, you know. Well, with all that being said, man, so the officers that were supposed to come on was supposed to move the wine, you know, the liquor or whatever. So when the shift came on that night, the dude had already made the wine, he bagged it up, he got it going to everybody it's supposed to go to, you know, somebody had already talked to the officer, he had already agreed, he will move it when he come on work, you know, it was understood. Man, lo and behold, this cat comes over there and um, he comes on ship and he's going to do the uh, moving. But by the time he get to do the moving, he has to go make an errand first. So he said, I got y'all when I come back. He comes back and he passes out the mail. When he finished passing out the mail, he started making some moves. He's moving this, he's moving that. So he get everybody that he's supposed to get, or mostly everybody that he's supposed to get. So now he goes on and makes his rounds, do all his other things that he has to do. And now dudes are starting to drink. Dudes are starting to feel themselves. Some dudes is getting tipsy. Other dudes is mad because they can't get none. It's just a crazy atmosphere now. So now everybody is feeling good. But some dudes is, is irritated because they ain't get a chance for him to pass them this. Dude is telling him, look, I still got something down here for you. He just ain't able to get it yet. I got you, though. When he come back, I got you. But he was gone for like a long time, like hour, hour, two hours. So by the time he get back, dudes is, like I say, a little tipsy. Some dudes a little irritated. So now they start trying to handle my man. You know, the CO, they handling him. Man, get over here, get the stuff, man. And all the time, he's doing us a fake. I mean, what he's doing can actually lose him his job. I mean, literally lose him his job. So he's doing us a favor, but this is the dudes are displaying attitude instead of gratitude. So dudes is cussing them out and calling them names, and then the other dudes just ain't got no, no, you know, no dog in the race. They hollering and cussing them out too, trying to piss them off because secretly they just hating because they don't want them to do it because they not getting nothing. So man, then the dude get an attitude himself. So he's moving one, Jonah. He got like two or three more to move. So he getting an attitude himself. So I, I can, I can clearly remember hearing him say, uh, "Well, y'all keep on, man. Uh, uh, I ain't move nothing. I ain't gotta move nothing. You know, ever no more." So man, that was, that was like, he, was, he was correcting what he was saying, but it was just like the wrong time and the wrong thing to say. Man, dude, stop bombarding them, cussing them out, calling them all types of you know, MFs and Bs, and then dudes start throwing toilet paper rolls, put their hand out, they slide and throw toilet paper rolls at them, and dudes was throwing bars of soap at them throughout the slide. This is chaos, man, this is prison. So, man, the dude is ducking and bobbing, and then that was it, man. He went He went and told it, he, he went and told it.
out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.